sitting here at my desk, I can look out into my backyard and see my three giant oak trees. Oak trees are one of my all-time favorite trees for so many reasons. So today, I just wanted to take a look at Tashin's The Book of Symbols to see exactly what it has to say about the oak tree. Ansel Adams' photograph of a white oak silhouetted against the Sierra foothills reveals the twisting branches and massive trunk characteristic of a fully grown oak. They are shapes that have become imprinted in the human imagination. Along with the oak's broad leaf and stipled fruit, the tiny acorn. Ancient Europe was once covered so densely with oaks that Julius Caesar encountered Germanic tribes who had never reached the end of these hardwood forests. Intimating the grandeur and vastness of the mythic world tree and Axis Mundi, the oak's commanding presence made it the most widely worshipped of trees. A member of the beech family, the oak could live a thousand years and grow over ten stories tall. Like the disseminated divine matter of creation stories, the oak's substance became the raw material for every kind of human fabrication. Carpenters fashioned its wood into bridges, pews, keels, barrels, coffins, and thrones admired for their strength and beauty. The soft bark of one variety still furnishes winemakers with cork stoppers. A more durable English variety provided shipbuilders with lumber for the Imperial British fleet, consuming entire forests that had earlier sheltered Merlin and Robin Hood. The acorn too proved invaluable. Ancient legends tell of an era before agriculture when humans relied upon acorns as a staple food. Even after the cultivation of grain, acorns served as fodder for wild beasts and livestock. An oak starts producing acorns when it's at least 20 years old and then just once a year in the fall. While remarkably, the whole of the mighty oak is contained in a potential of an acorn, only about one acorn in 10,000 actually becomes a tree. Evoking what is royal, solid, and eternal, oaks are traditionally associated with cycles of birth and death, especially in the seasonal rituals around the mythic year kings. Ancient druids dragged oak logs at Yuletide, the winter solstice, and heaped them onto midsummer bonfires to mark the cyclical demise of springtime's oak king, who was succeeded by autumn's holly king. Virgil claimed an oak gave birth to the first humans, just as Norse gods whittled Embla, the first woman, from an oak tree, and Ask, the first man, from an ash tree. On the other hand, in Northern Europe, where the oak tree belonged to the dead, its occasionally hollow trunk provided a much sought after coffin. Similarly, the alchemist philosophical tree was often a hollow oak, a maternal vessel in whose cleavage the alchemical king installed his bath of symbolic rebirth suggesting an inner feminine dimension of the seemingly virile tree that corresponded to the soul stuff of the adept. Gathering force throughout its span of life from acorn to spreading giant, the oak represents invincible August strength. Virgil wrote that violent thunderstorms could not uproot the oak with its roots anchored into Taurus and its branches reaching into the heavens. Drawing down lightning as natural conductors, these ancient legendary oaks were sacred to the thunder gods Zeus and Jupiter in Mediterranean Europe and Thor and Donar in Northern Europe. 
lightning was believed to cling to the oak's branches in the form of mistletoe, which James Fraser called the oak's seed of life since it remained green in the winter and turned golden when the oak was felled. But the oldest known oak cult was in northeastern Greece at Dodona, where the oak's rustling leaves were heard as the communications of an oracle. Athena gave Jason a talking oak beam from Dodona for the whole of his ship, the Argo. It guided the Ar- Argonauts to Colchis, where Jason found the golden fleece nailed to another oak. Symbolically as well as physically, oak continues to extend its branches and bear new fruit. In the alchemical fairy tale, The Spirit in the Bottle, the dark mercurial spirit of transformation is hidden in the roots of an oak tree. Young found this image of the treasure containing oak to be a beautiful evocation of the self, the unconscious core of the personality, a royal figure among all of the other contents of the unconscious. Like the oak, whose roots extend to the mineral realm, the self is rooted in the chemical elements of the body and extends, in a psychological sense, into infinite heights and depths. As a mature oak unfolds from an acorn, so does psychic individuality unfold from some small intimation of a self brought into consciousness, grows, and gives leaf over time to multiplicity of images. Mirroring the oak's solidity, the self is the perduing center that can withstand fiery outbursts of effect and psychic flooding. Oak transports and humbles so perfectly is imperial nature embodied in its form.